My name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You must so go through all the problems from it, uh, all the math problems from, from here. We have, so, we have finished solving almost all of them from this book. If there is any problem that gives you trouble, you will find a solution to that problem from day number 251 through 400. This book contains exact, almost, almost all exact same problem as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE and in most cases on the same page number. If you are interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now, we are pro well, right now we are in the process of solving quantitative comparison questions, quantitative comparison questions out of this book here, the journal GRE, the 10th edition, because the other two books that I just showed you, the first edition and the second edition of the revised GRE, simply do not contain enough quantitative comparison questions. Quantitative comparison questions are still a very big chunk of the exam. So get some extra practice. We started solving some problem from here, from day number 401. Right now we are on page number 207. Let's turn to it. Page number 207, problem number 1. Problem number 1, because it's problem number 1, it's a very straightforward and simple problem. So simple in fact that when it was given in the exam, when it was given in the real exam, 93% of people who took the exam had no problem with it. Here's what it says. We are being asked to compare. We are being asked to compare number of joints versus number of connections. Number of connections. And here is the picture that is given to us. It goes like this. We have two here. Then it goes like that. Then it goes here. Then it goes there. Then it goes there. Up there up there and finally up here. That's the picture that is given in the book here and they're telling us that these points here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. These points that they're telling you this is what they're calling joints and we just counted. We just counted them. We just counted them. There, were ten, there are 10 of them. There are 10 of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So number of joints, there are 10 of them. Now let's, let's count the number of connections. The connections are, connections are this line between the two points here is what they're calling connections. Let's count how many connections there are very quickly. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. That's all it is. Now there are 9 connections. So we have 9 connections versus 10 joints, 9 versus 10, the answer is A. The reason why 7% of people missed this question is not because they couldn't understand it, or not because they, uh, they had difficulty doing it out, because it's a tough problem. It's simple carelessness. Carelessness is one thing that you cannot afford to have in the real exam. You mustn't be cocky, no matter how simple the question is, you must pay attention to it. Because if you, become, you become, if you become cocky and you stop paying attention, that's when you end up making silly mistakes. Silly mistakes is not something we can afford. Save your mistakes for the hard problems. Do you understand? I don't mind, make, I don't mind making mistakes. I don't mind getting one or two questions wrong here and there. As long as those questions are very challenging ones. It's okay. I can live with that. But I do mind when I end up making some silly, uh, damn silly mistakes on a very easy question. Do you understand? Number two. Number two. Question number two. Had a percentile of 84. 16 percent of people missed it. Here's what we're told. Y equals to 3x over 4. We are also told that x equals to 2z over 3. And we are told that z equals to 20. And what we are being asked to compare, what we are being asked to compare is y versus 11. y versus 11. What I want you to do is pause the video. I forgot to remind you that in the beginning. Pause the video right now. 
do the problem yourself and then compare your work against the work that we'll do together in a few seconds and do that for every single problem. Do you understand? I'll give you two seconds to pause and then pause. Okay, here we go. So we are told that z is equal to 20 and z appears right here. So let's substitute the value of z in here. That's not the tough part. Uh, the, the, what we have to understand is that when you're substituting, uh, going around substituting, you have to do it in a smart way. For example, let's write, let's write our x here, 2 times z, 2 times z is just 2 times 20 over. And so it's actually there was nothing. Actually, I just realized I was making fuss about nothing. It's just 40 over 3. It's here, but you have to pick, be careful. It is here where we have to be careful. We are told that y equals 3x over 4. Let's write that quantity as, let's write this quantity as 3 quarter times x. 3 quarter times x makes your life easier. And now we know x is right here. x is 40 over 3. So y equals 3 quarter, 3 quarter times x, which we know is 40 over 3. 40 over 3. And we're done. That's it. We're done. We see 3 on the top. We see 3 on the bottom. The 3 drops out. We have a 4 here, we have a 40 here, we can cancel out the 4, divide top and bottom by 4 and we are done. And it turns out that y equals 10. y equals 10. If y equals 10 versus 11, the answer is b. The answer is b. Let's move on. Number 3. Question number 3. Now, before we do question number three, question number three had 84 percentile. Again, 16 percent of people missed this question. Here, we are being asked to compare length length of the minor arc W x versus the length of minor arc y z. Now before we before we actually do this problem, what we want to understand is this term here, minor arc. What does it mean by minor arc? I didn't mean to circle y z. What does the term minor arc mean? Let's understand that term. Shall we? For example, let's look at a simple example here. Here we have a circle. Listen very carefully. Here we have a circle and this is point A here. This is our point A and this is our point B. Now, if, if in this context, as I said, listen carefully, as if, if in this context somebody talks about the arc AB, there is a potential for confusion. There is a potential for confusion. When you say arc AB, do you mean this distance right here? Or do you mean all of this distance right here? This is also arc AB. We start from A and we go to B. And this is also arc AB from A to B. So when you say arc AB, arc AB, which one do you mean? Are you going, are you going clockwise, or are you going anti-clockwise, or counterclockwise for the Americans? There's a potential for confusion here. In a situation like this, the term that we use is minor arc. Minor arc is this guy right here. Minor arc, small arc. And if you were to go that way. It's the measure arc. It's not the, it's the, the, the distinction is not in the clockwise and anti-clockwise. The distinction lies in the, the length of the arc. The one that is shorter, obviously, that's the minor arc. Do you understand? And the other one is called the measure arc. Now let's look at the picture. The picture that is given to us here is this. We have a circle. And here we have a line from x to y. It's actually a very simple problem. I don't know why I'm making so much fuss about it. Here is we have w to z. So far so good. And then they draw these two together and they tell us that this is x degrees and they tell us that this is x degrees. In other words, in other words, these two lines are parallel. x, y and w, z. This, this, this is x degrees and this is x degrees. It's a very simple problem now. Because of the fact that these angles are equal, therefore the arc that faces that angle, x degree, the arc that faces that angle is this arc right here from x to w. This arc, this arc will have to be the same length as the arc that faces this angle x, which is y to z. This arc, y to z, it has to be the same length as the length of the minor arc w to x. They are the same length because these two angles we are told are equal. That's what it is. 
so simple it is. The answer is C. The answer is C. Let's do number four. Next problem. Number four. In number four, the percentile was 81 percent. We are told 0 0.023, 0 or 0 0.203 times 10 to the 2 versus versus 2.03 times 10. As you can see, as you can clearly see, it's a damn silly question is what it is. It's a damn silly question because 10 squared can be written as 0 0.203 times 10 times 10 and 10 times 0 0.203 you're just going to have to move the decimal place by one spot and if you move the decimal by one spot it becomes 2.03 and then times 10 2.03 times 10 is exactly what we have here and therefore the answer is C If I don't actually pause for a couple of seconds to, to, to remind you to pause and unpause the video, you should do it on your own. Just now I forgot to pause again, didn't I? Do it on your own. As soon as the problem is on the blackboard, pause the video and solve the problem. Number five. Question number five, let's move on. Question number five. Question number five, the percentile was 82. 18% of people missed it. Now let's start, let's start with question number five is something very simple. Let's start with something very simple. Here's our column A and here's our column B, as always, as always. Would you tell me which quantity is bigger, 10% of 200 or 10% of 200 versus, versus, 20% of 100. Pause the video and do what, do what you have to do and then tell me which quantity is bigger. Now, if you actually sat down and figured out the quantity here, what 10% of 20, if you actually figured out, sat down and figured out what 10% of 200 is and then figured out the 20% of 100 and then you realize that these two quantities are equal, if that's what you did there, you missed the point. Quantitative comparison. We're not supposed to compute anything. What we have to understand is that here we have 10%, here we have 20%. We have twice the percentage, twice the percentage of, twice the percentage of half the amount. Twice the percentage, twice the percentage of half the amount. Because of the fact that the amount is half, 200 versus 100, and percentage is exactly twice as much as that one, the answer is going to be C. These two quantities are equal. The answer is C. The answer is C. Let's do one more, shall we? Let's do one more. How about 40% how about of 250 versus 20% of 500. What do you notice? Again the same exact situation. Here we have 250, here we have 500, we have twice the amount but half the percentage. We have 20% as opposed to 40%. So twice the amount but half the percentage they're going to be same. 40% of half the amount, 40% of half the amount, it doesn't matter what that amount is, no matter what the amount is, 40% of, of an amount it's going to be exactly equal to 20% of twice the amount. That's what it is. Let's do one more, shall we? How about this one? 40% of 250 versus 80% of 125. What do you suppose what's the answer is going to be here? What do you suppose the answer is going to be here? It's the same answer. Here we have 40% and here we have 80%. We have twice the percentage but half the amount. They're equal. They're one more time, they're equal. The answer is C. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. 
how about 30% of 700 versus versus 15% of what is suppose what is suppose we have to put here instead of 30% we have 15% we have half the percentage instead of 30% we have 15% so in order for these two quantities to be equal in order for these two quantities to be equal what do you suppose we need because we have half the percentage we need twice the amount we need twice the amount let's do one more how about how about 30% of 700 versus 60% of and what do you suppose is going to go here here we have twice the percentage we have twice the percentage because of the fact that we have twice the percentage we need half the amount instead of 750 we're going to have 350 and they're going to be equal and they're going to be equal to each other they will have to be equal to each other because they negate each other you take half of one quantity and, and double of the other quantity just do one more how about 40 percent of 600 versus versus 80 percent of and what do you suppose we need to put here instead of 40 percent we have twice the percentage so we need half the amount 300 is then they're going to be equal in that case they're going to be equal i'm going to pick up speed here this is taking too long this is too silly and finally about 40 percent of 600 versus 20 percent of what amount we have 40 percent here here we have 20 percent it's half the percentage because it's half the percentage we're going to need twice the amount we're going to need twice the amount let's do two more very quickly about 25 percent of 450 versus 50 percent of an amount here we have 25 percent and here we have 50 percent we have twice the percentage so the amount needs to be half instead of 450 we need to have half of it it's 225 about 25 percent of 450 versus versus 12 and a half percent 12 and a half percent of so what do what you suppose goes here it's 12 and a half percent 12 and a half percent is half of 25 12 and a half percent is half of 25 so instead of 25 percent we're taking 12 and a half percent we're taking half the percentage because it's half the percentage we need twice the amount instead of 450 we need 900 and they're going to be equal they're all equal do you understand and that was question number that was question number five i'll see you tomorrow okay bye now